Welcome to the Analysis Corner. We'll be taking a look at the Grimm Brothers version of Rapunzel in today's video. The point of focus in this review and the conclusions that I draw are not to be taken as source or research material. This is meant to be a fun little jaunt into the many ways one story can be interpreted and is purely a mental exercise. I'm going to give a summary of the story, but if you want to hear the full version, here's a link to the video. The story begins with a couple who finally conceives after wishing for a child for a long time. They live next door to a well-known and feared enchantress who has a wonderful garden full of herbs and flowers. The wife is struck by a deep longing to eat the rampion growing in this garden. The husband agrees to steal some for fear that his wife might die from her desperate craving. He's caught by the enchantress, called Dame Gothel, when he sneaks into her garden for a second time because his wife's cravings only increased after trying the rampion the first time. As payment for stealing the plants, the enchantress takes their baby and raises her as her own child. She names her Rapunzel after the rampion plants that her mother ate during her pregnancy. The child becomes more and more beautiful as she grows up and is locked away by the enchantress into a tower with no doors or stairs. Dame Gothel gains entrance by calling out, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down thy hair to me. Upon hearing this, the girl winds her magnificent, long golden hair around a hook and sends it out the only window down the tower. The enchantress then uses the hair as a ladder to climb up and into the tower. One day, a prince hears Rapunzel singing and is so enchanted by it that he can't get it out of his mind. He finds the tower but realizes there is no way to enter. During one of his attempts to meet the source of the beautiful singing, he sees Dame Gothel approach the tower and call out to Rapunzel. The prince later uses the same tactic to gain entrance. Rapunzel is initially surprised and scared of the prince, but he wins her over with his friendship and soon convinces her to marry him. They devise a plan to weave a rope made out of bits of silk that the prince is to bring during each of his visits. However, Rapunzel gives away their secret when she tells the Enchantress how much heavier she is when climbing Rapunzel's hair to get into the tower compared to the prince. In a fit of rage, Dame Gothel cuts off Rapunzel's hair and exiles her into the desert. The Enchantress then returns to the tower and waits for the prince to return. She uses Rapunzel's cut-off hair to bring him up to the tower. Upon learning that his beloved is now lost to him, the prince tries to escape and jumps out of the tower. His eyes are pierced by the thorns he lands on, and he ends up blindly wandering the forest, weeping for his lost love. Years later, he ends up in the desert and hears Rapunzel's voice. He is reunited with his love and discovers that she gave birth to their twin children, a boy and a girl. Rapunzel's tears of happiness at meeting the prince again fall into his eyes and heal them. Then they return to his kingdom to live happily ever after. Rapunzel was published by the Grimm Brothers in December 1812. This story is sometimes seen as an allegory for female purity. The idea of being locked away in a tower and having long hair being a symbol of staying safe and innocent. This is because long, unbound hair was a hairstyle only allowed for young, unmarried girls. Married women had to put up their hair or hide them under the appropriate headwear. Under this interpretation, Dame Gothel's act of cutting off Rapunzel's hair 
represents her transformation from being a young, innocent girl into a woman. She has met the prince, secretly married him, and is pregnant with their twins. She has lost her innocence and can no longer stay locked in the tower. While this interpretation of Rapunzel is fascinating and carries a heavy message on the treatment of women based on their perceived purity, the story can also be viewed from the perspective of Rapunzel as the personification of addiction through the plant for which she was named. Rapunzel is actually another name for Rampion, which is a plant that was once widely cultivated as a vegetable with edible roots and leaves. It was also used as a medicine for various ailments such as fevers, digestive problems, and respiratory issues. In some parts of Europe, the rampion plant is seen as a symbol of love and fidelity, which, strangely enough, seems to be the addictive quality that everyone is after in the story. All of the characters in the story have some form of addiction, except for Rapunzel herself. The first characters we're introduced to are her parents. Her mother is almost immediately established as addicted to the rampion plants growing in the Enchantress's garden next door. She is described as someone longing for the rampion and having the greatest desire to eat some. She pined away and looked pale and miserable and claimed to her husband that she will die if she doesn't get to eat some. Throwing caution and logic to the wind, her husband agrees to steal some, saying, Let it cost thee what it will of the consequences. And then, once she has a taste, her desire for it increases three times as much as before. While it could be argued that the mother's obsessive behavior is linked more directly to the rampion and not to Rapunzel, it was her pregnancy cravings that led her down this path. She and her husband wished for a child for a long time and finally conceived. It was during this time that the mother developed a rampant and consuming need for the rampion. So it could be said that Rapunzel's existence was a driving force behind this need to eat the forbidden vegetable. The love and fidelity symbolized by the rampion is shown in the husband's willingness to risk the powerful enchantress's wrath for his wife. Now let's take a look at Dame Gothel. The Enchantress seems to understand the addictive properties of the rampion in her garden because her anger upon discovering the thieving parents is softened when the husband explains that his wife would have died if she didn't get any to eat. Dame Gothel then allows them to get as much of the rampion as they want, but demands the baby as payment and promises to care for her as her own daughter. The baby essentially is fed off of this addictive rampion, and by naming her Rapunzel, the Enchantress is acknowledging some transfer of these properties to the child. Rapunzel is said to have grown into the most beautiful child under the sun, and at the age of 12, is shut into a tower without a door or stairs by the Enchantress. There's no outright explanation for why the Enchantress does this. The story doesn't indicate any sort of magical or healing abilities from Rapunzel that the Enchantress is trying to hide from everyone. The only clues we have are the fact that Rapunzel is described as the most beautiful child and that Dame Gothel says, the beautiful bird sits no longer singing in the nest when she confronts the prince later in the story. It sounds like she's hoarding Rapunzel because she's a beautiful child that she wants to keep under her supposed protection in the tower that she calls a nest forever. Her addiction is the need to be a mother. The word Gothel is of German origin and references nurse, foster mother, or godmother. She wants to keep Rapunzel with her as her child forever. The anger and violence she displays against Rapunzel and the prince is her reaction to the betrayal of the love and fidelity she sought from her anthropomorphized Rampion. Finally, let's look at the prince. He becomes addicted to Rapunzel's voice. He hears her singing from her tower and is so moved by it 
he essentially forces his way into the tower by impersonating the Enchantress and climbing up using Rapunzel's hair. He then explains to her that his heart had been so stirred that it had let him have no rest and he had been forced to see her. The prince is the only one who actually gets the literal love and fidelity for which the Rampion is a symbol. Rapunzel ends up living in misery taking care of their twin children in the desert where the Enchantress sent her into exile. Meanwhile, the prince wanders the forest, blind and lamenting over the loss of his wife for years. When they find each other, her tears cure his blindness. It is the first and only time in the story that alludes to the medicinal or healing properties of the Rampion, but it helps to bring closure to the story in that the two lovers, who loved and remained faithful to each other, are finally reunited, healed, and able to live as a family for the rest of their lives. The Rampion does not have any qualities or chemical properties that would make it addicting in real life. It's simply a very useful plant that can be used for food and historically as a medicine. In the context of the story, I don't believe the choice of this specific plant is important as to the cause of the different characters' obsessive behaviors. The story could have included any useful plant and it would have worked as long as there was emphasis placed on the thing that each of these characters are really searching for. At the core, they are looking for love and companionship. The husband risked the fury of a powerful enchantress for fear of losing the wife he loved so much. Dame Gothel became so unreasonably furious at finding that her adopted daughter had become a woman that she punished and sent away the very person she was using to fulfill her need to be a mother. And even though in the end his love for her was faithful and true, the prince was very much not charming or noble in the way he forced himself into the tower to meet and convince Rapunzel to become his bride. As Shakespeare wrote in Act 3, Scene 2 of As You Like It, Love is merely a madness, and I tell you, deserves as well a dark house and a whip as madmen do. And the reason why they are not so punished and cured is that the lunacy is so ordinary that the whippers are in love too. I hope you enjoyed this slightly different look at Rapunzel. It's always a pleasure spending a little time with you talking about the strange twists and turns these old stories can take. Until next time, I am, as always, your friendly resident ghost in the library.